Hey guys, welcome to book review number 99. Today I'm going to be reviewing um, Wrong About Japan, A Father's Journey with His Son by Peter Carey. See if you guys can see that. Um, so this slim volume, uh, let's see it's 160 some 58 pages, uh, is about Peter's journey, obviously as the title would suggest, with his son to Japan. Um, Specifically to follow his son's uh, uh, manga or anime uh, kind of interest. Um, his son being, I believe, like 12 or 13, maybe 13 at the time. Um, having an extreme sort of preteen interest in all things Japanese animation. Um, it really uh, kind of... He was able to meet a couple authors, including the author of um, Mobile Gundam Suite, or Mo Mobile Suite Gundam, uh, which is a uh, story about uh, uh, anime, you know, about uh, children that are fighting an intergalactic war where they're put in uh, uh, sort of like Transformer-esque uh, bodysuits, large bodysuits for these children, and they fight bad guys with them and fight among each other, I think, uh, in it. I should explain what manga and uh, anime are first. Uh, I guess the closest equivalent of manga in the United States would be like comic books. Um, but unlike sort of the pulp nature, there's certainly pulp manga, but the kind of a broad-ish nature of a lot of comic books, manga is really considered like, or can be at least, considered like a high art. Like... Um, really reaches professors and uh, will read them on the trains just as much as some fanboy will, some, you know, professor in his 40s. Though certainly, as the you know, story would suggest, there are uh, teenagers that read it as well. Anime being the uh, offshoot of manga, that's um, uh, sort of as the, the name would suggest, the animated version of manga. Um, the... Basically, for the most part, manga comes first and then the anime kind of follows it. Um, follows similar storylines, similar drawing styles. So the manga is um, sort of paneled, you know, just like a comic book, panel by panel page. Uh, I should also mention that they tend to be thicker than a comic book. I think they can be comic book lengths, but you can get manga that are, you know, much thicker than this in, uh, um, you know, the length or the breadth of the uh, book. Uh, it mentioned in the book that actually uh, manga evolved sort of out of um, what I would call like puppet shows or uh, I forget what they call it but it's where you shine like a black light on um, um, like character cutouts and uh, have like a little sort of sketch show and this would be presented in a box like this. This is in sort of like uh, pre-modern Japan where these people would go around and uh, present uh, small children's entertainments to the various towns and stuff. And it was actually mentioned much like uh, in modern times where uh, to a degree manga has its own artistic reputation but another purpose is served uh, through um, sort of commerce both in buying the manga books and the anime books but also buying say like toy figures with the manga and anime. Um, often these uh, people that were put on these little puppet shows would sell like ice cream and stuff. And so they'd be little small time entrepreneurs, uh, kind of maybe like the equivalent of like a busker or something on the streets nowadays. Um, what else? Uh, Peter son, or Peter, the author, uh, tries to take his son to a number of more traditional kind of uh, Tokyo. This is uh, almost completely set into the Tokyo area. I shouldn't say that it's all Japan, really. It's it says Japan in the title, but uh, they, they primarily focus on Tokyo. Um, cultural um, happenings. Uh, they go to a no. I believe it's I believe that's how it's pronounced. Just like no, the word in English. Um, play or drama, which is sort of a traditional. Uh, some would say somewhat boring. Um, maybe like a ballet or something like that. Or not, not necessarily boring to the connoisseur, but kind of um, to the outsider, uh, kind of hard to appreciate. 
Peter could appreciate it because he was old enough, you know, Peter being in his 60s, to have the uh, cultural um, perspective. But his son was one of some of the four most boring hours of his life. Uh, and one of the other things about uh, these no plays is that they're sort of like, um, they're not real short, but maybe like one acts, essentially like a series of one acts, but you don't present them separately. Like it's a long, long play, but it's um, presented as if completely separate storylines. So his son would constantly think that, that this was the last one of these kind of segments of um, the no play, uh, but in turn it went on and on and on for like three and a half to four hours, which is even for a regular play, a pretty ridiculously long um, time frame. Uh, let's see. He got to meet the author of Howl's Moving Castle, which was kind of cool. Um, as well as Toto no... Uh, I think his name was Mitsuzaki. He's like the most famous... I apologize. I know I'm butchering that and getting it completely wrong. But uh, considered like the premier um, animator of the time. And I guess he's kind of an anime... Uh, but not sort of in the traditional action sense. He's much more sort of um, uh, kind of the nature and uh, I, I don't I don't know the word for it. Kind of uh, much more like a Disney play. Well, I guess I should say closer to a Disney play than the action of anime, but not a Disney play in the sense that it's in the Japanese tradition. That's a good way of putting it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Disney play, Disney movie. Uh, I guess there's the Lion King Disney play, but Disney movie. Uh, he meets up with, uh, I believe his name's Tanaka. Let me check this out real fast. Who's uh, somebody that his son met online while uh, kind of getting ready to go to Japan. Uh, let's see. Mr. Mizayaki. Mizuyaki, I think that's the, the name of the guy that did Howl's Moving Castle. Um, let's see. Ta Takashi. Takashi. Takashi was the name of the boy meets. Not somebody famous or another animator, but kind of provided a, a little insight into um, fandom of anime and manga from an insider perspective not from like the outsider well it's not an outsider perspective because they're all fans but kind of sort of the uh, Japanese cultural perspective of somebody that's interested in anime not that he's particularly um, like some sort of crazed fan but just sort of like a regular fan who they happen to meet and kind of provides a little bit different perspective um, this is a pretty short book so I think I'm going to leave it at that I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I missed out on but uh, it was a good book. It's a really, really quick read. <coughs> Jeez, excuse me. It's really, really <coughs> okay, this is ruined. It's a really, really quick read. Quick read. Uh, I am a slow reader, and I read in a day and a half. So, um, wrong about Japan: A Father's Journey with His Son by Peter Carey. Check it out, you guys. Japan J Vlog. Peace out, you guys.